Hey guys, welcome to the Max Invest YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing a weekly update. We'll be taking a look at the prices of some of our favorite coins in the past week or so and see how everything is doing. Of course, like the vast majority of weeks, it's been pretty boring. Basically, we've been trending down slightly and there's just been more and more pain in the crypto markets. Of course, the prices of our favorite coins are still pretty high. However, just to see them slowly bleeding out over time is quite painful and we're not hitting most people's price targets. So we'll take a look at why that actually is in this video. Anyway, if you enjoy the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, the links are down below in the description, and remember, nothing in this video is financial advice. As we can see, the majority of cryptocurrencies are slightly down on the week. Bitcoin is down roughly 4% and Ether is down roughly 1.3%. If we take a look at last week, it was the same story. Most of the cryptos were just down a couple of percent and they were basically roughly the same prices as to where they are today. If we take a look at some of the other altcoins, the altcoin market is very, very random right now. The majority of altcoins are flat, however, there's the occasional altcoin that's pumping. Right now, Terra is going very, very very well, going up 10% on the day and 24% on the week. Of course, this is because their ecosystem is rapidly expanding. They just had Columbus 5 and a lot of new dApps come on board. And a couple of these other altcoins are going pretty well on the 24 hour chart and on the weekly. Now, if we take a look at Ethereum's price, we can see that the macro chart looks really good right now. And I've actually been saying this for a while. I've been saying it doesn't matter if we come back down and test the bull market support band. In fact, I do think this is very, very healthy. Of course, this is made for currently one, two, three. It's made for about six weeks of boring price action where we've just slowly trended down. However, I do think that this macro chart looks a lot better. We're slowly trending back to the bull market support band and we're getting ready to take off again. Of course, a lot of people in the markets right now are saying that we're entering a bear market. If you actually look at Ethereum's macro chart, it's impossible to say this is a bear market. In fact, this seems like a parabolic bull market if you look at the macro chart. If we say Ethereum was at roughly $600 at the beginning of the year, Ethereum is up about six times in the space of one year, which is already a very, very good game. And it's pretty consistently gone up with a couple of pull pullbacks that have only gone back to the bull market support band. So right now it does seem like Ethereum is still in a very, very strong bull market and it does look very good. Of course, a lot of people are referencing Bitcoin's price when they say that we may be in a bear market. However, even with Bitcoin, it just looks like Bitcoin has pulled back to the bull market support band. It's testing it right now and it looks ready to just continue to move up. I really don't think we need to be going for 100,000 by the end of the year or 100,000 in a couple of months. If we just slowly and steadily rally up, I think that's the way to go. Of course, the vast majority of people in crypto don't expect this. Everyone in crypto is essentially saying that cryptos will either go parabolic and everything will moon or will either go into a multi-year bear market and those are the only two options. Personally, I think both of these options are very unlikely. I don't think we're going to go on a parabolic rally and I don't think we're entering a multi-year bear market. I think we're just going to trend up over time a little bit more steadily and this is something I'm quite excited for. Overall, I'm not too worried about Bitcoin and Ethereum right now. They're doing very, very well. Of course, if we're looking at the alternative coin market with all of the other different coins, it is very variable as I've already said. Some coins are just mooning and going up 100x very, very quickly, and others are doing absolutely nothing. Of course, in the doing nothing pile, we do have Chainlink. Unfortunately, Chainlink is just hanging around and it's not going too well. I did say that I do expect Chainlink to get around the $13 range before going back up. I still think this is a possibility and I wouldn't be surprised to see it drop another 40% or so pretty quickly. However, we will need to 
wait and see what happens. As we can see, Chainlink is one of the coins that's up the most on the day. It's up roughly 7% on the day. However, I do find this number pretty deceptive because every time Chainlink goes up about 7% relative to everything else, I see Link Marines posting on Twitter that it's finally Chainlink's time. They say Ethereum is up 1% and Chainlink is up 7%, it's ready to rally. However, every time there is a big drop, Chainlink will probably drop about 5 times more than Ethereum, and it's consistently happened over and over again for the past couple of weeks, where every Every time there's any sort of fear in the market or any sort of drop, Chainlink will have a really, really bad candle. Of course, I do think that the momentum for Chainlink will eventually shift, however, it has not shifted yet, and it hasn't shown any signs of shifting whatsoever since the 10th of May. So Chainlink's just been hanging around, and I do think it will pull through in the end. Now I'm preparing a couple of videos on Chainlink's fundamentals and the graph's fundamentals, because because Chainlink and the graph do earn a lot of fee revenue, and I do want to talk about this, because the way that you can actually value an asset is you can actually look at its fundamental value right now. The fundamental value is the amount of Link tokens that need to be paid in order to pay for Link services, and this is very, very similar with the graph. Of course, what you can do is you can extend out this fundamental value and predict what it'll be in 2025. Now, the way to actually look at the fundamental value right now is to look at the current amount of fee revenue for Chainlink and then add a monetary premium on top of it. Of course, it looks like we haven't got a very big monetary premium right now. Most people don't want to hold Chainlink and most people aren't excited for it. Of course, something like Ethereum has a very, very large monetary premium right now and Ethereum continues to outperform as more and more people see Ethereum as a strong and viable investment. They want to invest in Ethereum and start staking to help the Ethereum network. Of course, this is one of the things that I think is going to help Chainlink out substantially. Once Chainlink enables super linear staking, I do believe a lot of big institutional investors will want to come into Chainlink. This is because Chainlink will be seen as a more viable store of value and a more viable investment. You'll be able to invest in it and earn risk-free yield over time, which is going to be very, very good. Of course, that's why I do think that staking is probably the biggest announcement that we can get, and I am hoping that we will see some announcement about when staking quite soon. As we can see, the Chainlink Ethereum chart continues to look worse and worse, and I have said that I do believe the conditions for this to get better is Ethereum going up significantly, this chart bleeding even more, and then Ethereum eventually stabilizing at a higher price to allow Chainlink and some of the other altcoins to start running. Of course, GRT, the graph, is a very, very similar story to Chainlink, and I've totally stopped allocating to the graph right now. I'm just sitting back and I'm waiting for this chart a little bit. Now, if I do see the graphs chart drop even more, I'll probably start buying back a little bit. However, right now I do want to buy some coins with a bit more momentum. I'm not selling any of my GRT position right now. I'm very confident for the long term. However, I want to see this chart flatten out a little bit and then I'll start buying before it goes back up. So since I do want some coins with a bit more momentum, I've been looking at Matic more and I've been buying more and more Matic. I'm also very very, very bullish on Matic right now, and I love the things that they're doing. I do think that roll-up technology is going to be the future, and if we look at the parties that are the furthest ahead in roll-up technology, in my mind I can see that probably Polygon and Arbitrum are the two furthest ahead in roll-up tech right now. I would say Arbitrum because Arbitrum have currently tons and tons of apps on their optimistic roll-up, and I would say Polygon because Polygon already have their own chain, they have stacks of money and stacks of big investments. Of course, there's also Starkware, ZK Sync, and Optimism, however, I would say that Arbitrum and Polygon are probably the two biggest players in the roll-up space right now, in my opinion, and Polygon already has their own token, and I'm very excited to be investing in this one.
Of course, I've drawn some sort of a triangle on the charts right here. I'm not sure if this triangle means that much. However, if we just look at it simply, Polygon's testing its old all-time highs, and I do think there's a good chance that it can break out and start rallying. Of course, once we break out from the old highs, there's no more levels of resistance, and it could mean we get quite a good rally. Anyway, this brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching the video.